My name is Stephanie Rogers and I am the Executive and Artistic Director of the Anderson Center at Tower View and today I'm happy to be talking with BJ Norman, a Red Wing based visual artist who is speaking to us from her studio at the Anderson Center. BJ, welcome. Could you tell our audiences a little bit about the media that you use as an artist? Hi, welcome everybody. Um, the mediums that I work in are oil, pastel, pencil, colored pencil, and occasionally acrylic. And I do mainly portraiture. But when one does portraiture, one can do landscaping or flowers or much of anything. Right, classically portraiture has been considered one of the, the harder uh, genres of painting to master, right? If you want to be accurate, yes, that's true. Well, we're so happy to have you talking with us today. When did you know that you want to be an artist? Is this a lifelong passion and pursuit of yours? Yes, it has been. And it's, it's kind of a fun story when I was, I, I remember vividly when I was in kindergarten or first grade, we were, had gone to the circus and we came back and the teacher wanted us to draw pictures. And so we were all drawing pictures and there was a girl sitting next to me who draw some pictures and the kids thought they were really good. And I looked over and I thought, well, I can do that. And she's getting all this attention. So I did. And so my drawing came out quite well and I got a lot of attention too. And like most kids, if you get a positive attention, then you kind of want to continue with that. But I've always been visual. I would um, look at magazines and book illustrations and uh, love to draw from as soon as I could hold a pencil, I think. And I, and my, my parents were very encouraging of that. So that was nice. That is important. I am lucky in that way too. Is there a point where it transitioned to more of a professional or serious interest for you? Actually, that again, it was in school. It was in high school, and the art teacher there was uh, very instrumental in helping me perfect portrait sketches. We had a um, student of the month presentation that kids that were like to write would do the bio about them and then one of the artists in school would draw a portrait sketch in charcoal and there was a senior she was graduating so we needed to fill her shoes so the art teacher said okay I'm going to help you learn how to do portraiture because you have an accuracy of eye which she did and then during college uh, then I spent my summers doing kind of like what you would call boardwalk sketching but it was on a uh, excursion boat from Cape Cod to Nantucket Island every day through the summers. So my skills were honed quite well doing that. And you continue to do portraitures for commission. Is that, is that true? That's correct. When we moved here to Minnesota, there was, there was kind of a lag. I was still drawing some, but then we had two children and things were quite busy, but I always managed to get something in there but then i kind of turned it into a business once we moved here to red wing his children were in school and i had more time and, um, and it became more word of mouth for my advertising i tried it advertising in the paper or whatever and it, it nothing came of it but one person saw my work had my work and one to the other to the other and that's how are you working from photographs primarily I like to work from people, but that doesn't happen much anymore. Um, it used to be that I would have somebody come to the studio, I would make sketches, I would take photographs, and then work with a combination thereof. And I still like to do that if I can um, get the chance. Otherwise, it's photographs. And if it's photographs, I need to have not just the one I'm working from, but many others so I can get a feel of the face, the, you know, the three-dimensional aspect of the face because as you know one photograph may look not like you <laughs> depending on the angle of the camera and the lighting so if i know them or have met them then that helps immensely that's interesting i it makes complete sense but i wouldn't i wouldn't have thought about it in that way but also i'm not a portrait artist um are there reliable sources of inspiration for you like any profession, you continue to 
educate yourself. I did graduate from college in a Bachelor of Fine Arts, but you, it's always continuous education. And if I find an artist that does workshops, that I like their work and I think I can learn something from it, then I have over the years done that, taking workshops and, and books and such. But having a, an education where you have a, another person showing you, not just from books, but seeing their work and seeing how they, how they work themselves is extremely helpful. And then of course, then we all take it off onto our own style of working. And I'm, I'm just curious of all of these photographs that you're taking of your subjects, how do you pick which one becomes the main reference point for the image? Is that in, in conversation with the subject or is there something that just speaks to you? I would say all of the above. <laughs> the, uh, a lot of times I will go uh, with the photographs and with the client and we would discuss what seems to them. And then if I have a difference of opinion, then I will tell them why and, and then work from that. But you're correct. It's, there's a lot of intuitive feeling to it and knowing, being very familiar with the, the face and a sensitive to any kind of distortion that the camera might do, then I would make sure that that, that was not um, part of the photograph or, or part of the drawing. I would, I would go for the one that's just right. Has the pandemic changed how you're working as an artist at all? Commissions are down right now, and I don't know if, if that has something to do with it. It very well could. On the other hand, it gives me an opportunity to do some things that I haven't had a chance to. And so as an artist, when we work pretty much solitary anyway, um, it's, it makes no difference other than there's no money coming in. <laughs> Well, I hope that changes soon for you. I know in my own family, um, not, not a family portrait, but a drawing that my mom had commissioned of my grandparents' house um, when my mom was in college from a college friend. And that was one of the more fought over items when it came time to divide things up um, after my grandparents passed and that these these images that you make um, for commissions become family heirlooms and some of the most important items that people own for many families. So um, I think it's, it's an incredible investment in maintaining that moment in life. I just love the image of the two kids with the umbrellas above you. There's so much joy and light in that, in that image. Um, and I hope that your business picks back up because I think it's important not just for you, but also for, for people to have these types of objects if they can. And you do a variety of different media and price points, correct? Correct. Could you speak just a little bit about the different media that you work with to create portraits and how you think about working with, say, graphite versus oil paints? The oil is much more time consuming and priced accordingly the uh and a lot more steps of course um, the medium is far more complicated than just graphite graphite's a delight and charcoal and that is just just one value or i won't say one value but it's just you don't have to work with color of course and when you're working with color you also have to understand the value of things meaning the light and dark and with color you have to as you're painting you also have to keep that in mind um that's number one and then the, the way the colors behave with each other with oil painting it's for me it's a, a more complicated in that when you're mixing your colors you have to remember what color mixes to make another color. And if you're working on a large portrait, you get your, your, um, your 
formulas, your color formulas down. But if you leave that portrait because of an in interruption of this travel or your way, then you have to come back and kind of relearn that, which I find extremely frustrating. Pastel is a bit different because you can, um, everything is an overlay anyway. You don't really mix colors. You lay one over the other. And the same with colored pencil too. So that's um, a little less of the memory work in it of what mixture makes what. The, like I said, with the graphite and the charcoal, I, I find that extremely delightful because then I don't have to worry about what color makes what, what formula, mixture of colors, but just the, the value, dark and the light and playing with that. Are there long-term use, I'm gonna stop and start over a little bit. You spoke earlier about always working to learn more and improve your craft. Are there long-term goals that you're working towards that you don't feel like you've achieved yet? I think as artists, we're always working toward achieving something better that, that you know, it's just improving if we can. Right now, I'm gotten excited with uh, something entirely new for me, um, working with colored pencil. Um, I think that's just great fun. Uh, so that's learning something new is, is always fun. For me, the most fun, for lack of a better word, place to be as an artist or generative is a word I like to use sometimes is when I'm working on something that's adjacent to skills I already have, um, but also a new direction where I don't totally know how I'm going to figure it out, but I know that I'm going to one way or another. So I'm imagining that you transitioning to colored pencils is a little bit like that, where you are bringing all of your background knowledge on color and value and accurately rendering a scene to the table, but then you're also working through the technical um, considerations of a new medium. So that's um, that's great that you're continuing to challenge yourself and to learn. And for me, that's one of the most fun places to be as an artist and as a professional. Well said, Stephanie. <laughs> it was very good, very good. I agree, absolutely. Do you have advice that you would give to aspiring artists? If we have teenagers watching this who are thinking about making art a big part of their life, what would you say to them? If you want to draw realistically, which I do, I just, I so enjoy that. But whatever you do, whether it becomes abstract or a little more impressionistic, I believe that the, the basis of drawing, to be able to draw well, it's like learning to read before you write your novel. So if you learn to draw and you learn to draw well, then you can go anywhere you want. When I'm in a museum or an art show or something, no matter what the, the medium is or the where they've taken it, if I can see that they know how to draw the under the the, uh, the basis of it is some good drawing, then I, I find that personally much more interesting and exciting. It shows to me it shows that there's a um, a love of, of drawing underneath, and that's that's kind of my my soul. So you, you've got a portrait of a dog behind you and you mentioned dog portraits. You do animal portraits as well as people. Yes, I do. They're critical to get the, the right uh, colors and the right photographs. Absolutely, do you do cats? I do cats, yes. Cats are great fun. Any, any other subjects that we should know about? Well, there's horses, of course, uh -huh. I've done horses. And uh, again, being a portrait artist, you're qualified to draw anything. And I, I, one of the things I like to tell people is that when we're just kind of joking around, I said, I can paint your fantasy. What would you like to look like? <laughs> right, you're kind of, people's fantasy is probably somewhere between what they actually look like and what they wish they looked like, right. but still recognizable, yeah. We can take a very, very um, upstanding person and turn them into a pirate if they would like that. Sure, or obviously the other way where 
in photography, <laughs> we talk about soft focus lenses, which is just kind of smooth over all the wrinkles. They just go away. But accuracy is still there. Yes, accuracy is still there for the bigger, more important details. Correct. And you've been at the Anderson Center for how long now? Going on five years. And um, when we moved from Vesa into Red Wing, um, I had a studio, a home studio in Vesa, and we were downsizing. So a studio opened up here at the Anderson Center, and I moved in, and it is just wonderful. I've always worked from home, which is fine, but for myself, it's, it's quite distracting. Uh, like, okay, I'll take a little bit here and go do the laundry or something. Next thing that, you know, hours have gone by and I'm not doing my artwork. So this is, uh, this is wonderful, a treasure for me. Are there places that people can see your work online or in the community? We just had a lot of your work in the portrait exhibition that came down, right? It was supposed to continue longer, but it came down right as everything was closing for the coronavirus pandemic. Um, but do you have shows coming up or work online? No, I don't have any shows coming up, but, um, and I, I don't have a website yet, but I do have, um, I'm on Facebook with, my name is on there, and that's under BJ Mache Norman, and that's, I use the Mache as, um, that's my maiden name, so I kind of put that in there, um, so they could go there, and, and I would have things there that they could, they could see. And if somebody wanted to start a conversation with you about commissioning a portrait, how would they get a hold of you? And that would be my uh, email. It would be fine. Great. Is there anything else you wish I had asked you or you want us to talk about here? Well, I have done a mural. I did one at uh, the Vesa Church, um, at the Vesa Center. And that was uh, something absolutely new that I've ever done. And that was another new thing that I had to learn. I'd never done anything that large before. And it was great fun learning the technique, uh, the materials to use. And um, so that was uh, 12 feet tall by 32 feet wide. That was, that was good. And it's there to see. Well, that's a great place that people could go see your work. What a what a different scale. That does sound like it would be, that would be a challenge for me to go from working at say 36 by 24 to a wall that big. There was quite a process um, because I wanted to get it accurately for the time and place, the costume, either the characters in the, in the background. And then, so I had to plan all of the, 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 the composition out and, the, um, and then to scale to scale it up and grid it on the wall and transfer that to the wall and all of that so it was all all big and new but still the same same principles as if i was working on a small canvas but just much 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 larger thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me today bj this uh, video is part of the artistic response team of red wing which is a collaboration between the anderson center art reach Red Wing Arts, Universal Music Center, and the Sheldon Theater. Thank you, Stephanie. It's been a delight.